Hey everybody, Colby from Sanitarium Productions back again with another G.I. Joe box set figure and vehicle combo package unboxing review spectacular. And not really that spectacular, but uh, today we're taking a look at the Rise of Cobra Cobra Flight Pod with the E-Light Viper. This was a Target exclusive back in the day. Uh, what was it? 2009 I think is when this one came out. Um, these are better known as the old Cobra Trouble Bubbles, and I've always loved these things. And when the new one came out, you know, I just kind of jumped at the chance, and I've got a couple of these things floating around. But uh, this particular one has a nice kind of red tint color scheme to it, uh, and it's pretty cool. So I thought we'd just take one out of the box, put it together for you, and uh, kind of go from there. So stick around. So here's the packaged version of the Cobra Flight Pod with the E-Lite Viper. It's got some nice box art here with some, looks like, ninja guys or something sneaking around the building back here. Really cool kind of cityscape drawing and then the actual Flight Pod itself. And, of course, the Target exclusive little sticker there. file card which I'll get a try to get a scan for y'all of. So overall the packaging is pretty nice here. Let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what's inside. There's a piece of tape here at the top. Nothing at the bottom. Nothing on the side. Another piece at the top here. So we'll just go ahead and slice that open. actually opens from the top as opposed to some of the rest of them that open from the sides. And you just pull it out like this. And we have this nice little contained box here that has all the stuff in it. Uh, we'll go ahead and slice the tape off of the figure container. Lift that out. Put that to the side. And let's see how we can get into this box now. Uh, there's a piece of tape over here on the side. Actually, a bunch of pieces of tape. So we're just going to cut all of them off. And that just comes completely out. We have the uh, instruction sheet and sticker sheet folded up nice and neat here. And inside of this we have a couple of pieces. And then more packaging. So, yeah, so there is all the contents of the package itself. So what we'll do next is just kind of zoom in all this stuff individually and uh, Assemble the flat pod using the instructions, and then we'll take a look at the action figure itself. So, small piece of tape here holding the uh, instruction sheet and sticker sheet tape shut. So just slice that open. And let's pull this apart. Uh, just a really small sticker sheet. And the folded instructions. The label placement on one side and the assembly instructions on the other side. So now we're kind of zoomed in a little bit closer on this and all we're going to do is just uh, open up this accessory bag here real quick. Uh, like everything else it's just taped shut. So. Inside of it, we have the uh, actual canopy piece. Nice red shade of red. <laughs> and then we have all the other little bits and pieces. Uh, 
down here. <clears throat> so what was in there was um, essentially these uh, two pipes, hoses, the uh, two weapons for the uh, figure, and these two missiles. So we're going to take the, uh, the two weapons, slide them off to the side. We'll look at them when we look at the actual figure itself. And now we have all the parts out here. Step one, it wants us to take uh, the actual seat mechanism, the um, the pod itself, and it uh, it actually comes here with the um, this little band piece uh, already kind of uh, rubber banded in, but we do need to go ahead and slice that rubber band off because we do not need it there. And the first step is to actually just attach this um, seat band looking thing uh, into this groove that is in place and as we saw just a minute ago it actually comes attached to it already so you should be pretty easy to find out exactly where it goes and it just rests in there once we attach one of these other pieces it'll clamp itself shut and hold it in place but uh, that's the first step is just to make sure that piece is in place Step two is attach the seat to the actual pod canopy. As you can see, there are two pegs on the back of the uh, actual seat mechanism. And just looking at it here, there is this big silver screw here that holds in place the clip, which is what your figure will rest in. The original vintage version actually had a seat belt included, but uh, no, actually it had a back peg included, not an actual seat belt. But uh, when they updated this for the 25th anniversary line, they uh, switched to this um, clip holder instead of a back peg. So, anyway, uh, within on the actual pod, there are two peg holes in the back, as you can see there. And those two pegs there just line up with it and it just slides in place. You may have to kind of turn it around a little bit to get it to, so you can see if it lines up correctly. But once it does line up, all you have to do is just uh, push back on it and it should just uh, snap into place. And as you can see, there's this. Uh, it just kind of snaps in place. It's not a loud snap or anything like that, but it uh, just kind of sits in there and it just holds everything together. So not much to it right there, but uh, that's pretty much it. Step three is to... Uh, it's actually already done for us, but it's to attach the drive mechanism, I guess is the best thing to call that there. Um, so essentially they just snap into place. It's a two-piece part, uh, but it comes pre-assembled for you, so it already has the cannon and the uh, scope mechanism put in place. So we can actually skip that step here because it's already done for us, but uh, it just snaps in place also. Step four is to attach the other piece of the uh, drive shaft mechanism and the actual gun. But again, it's already done for us, so we don't have to actually do that step. Uh, but we also need to attach the hoses at this point. So we had uh, two of these little hoses that come, and uh, they are pretty much the same. So it doesn't matter which side they go on. Just pick one and go with it. <clears throat> one piece will attach to the front of the gun just like this and it's just got a little peg hole to snap into and then on the side 
there is another hole to snap it in. It just fits like that right there. Pretty simple. And then uh, it's not actually mentioned in the uh, actual instruction sheet, but there are two hoses here, so there is another one for the second side. And it works the same way. Just find the little hole there, snap it in place. And then the second one goes to the actual bottom of the gun. And then you have your uh, your hoses in place. And you can rotate your gun and everything like that now. So. Step five is to attach the uh, jetpack. And it comes pre-assembled as well. It is a two-piece shell. And it's got some nice detail work inside of it. And then these uh, rotor finny things. Um, but it just snaps to the back of the pot itself. So on the jetpack, there is a peg and then a, another hole here. And on the actual pot itself, it's just reverse of that. There is a peg hole at the top and then a peg at the bottom. And you just line those up. Hopefully you can see that. And you just press on it and it just snaps in place. And this one you have to press a little bit harder to get it to go in. But uh, it's not too bad. Just push on it real hard to get it all flush. And that's, that's essentially it. Step six is to attach the missiles. And there are two missiles that came with it. And they have the uh, same kind of dumbbell peg locking mechanism that's uh, very common with these lines. This one is actually not very pronounced dumbbell wise, um, but on the side of the uh, shell here, there are these two slots, tab things, uh, and you just put the missiles on the side of it. And they just uh, snap into place like that right there. One for each side. I can't do this. Well, there it goes. So, two missiles now, and you are good to go. The final step is just to attach the canopy, and it is on a hinge joint. So on the back of the um, pod itself, where the uh, seating portion attaches to the body, you can see there's a little um, hinge point right there. That's where we're going to be putting this. Uh, and essentially what we have to do to make this work correctly is you're going to have to pull the uh, seat out just a little bit because it is in there pretty tight and it makes kind of getting this... A in there a bit of a pain uh, but if you don't want to take it out completely all you have to do is just kind of pull up on it as you push down and then this will just snap into place like that and now you have your hinged canopy that opens and closes and that's essentially all that there is to construct your very own Cobra flight pod AKA the trouble bubble. So now we're taking a look at the uh, Elite Viper. It's held in place by these uh, rubber bands like we are pretty well used to in all the figures. So all you got to do is just cut those off. 
the figure itself should just lift out of the packaging very easily. And I'll leave the uh, rubber bands in the old packaging because we don't need those rubber bands. We'll see if we can zoom in a little bit on this one now. So here's the Elite Viper out of the packaging. It has a nice, uh, you know, Urban Camo Deco paint job on it. The silver and red, which complements the uh, red and black trouble bubble very well. It's got some very nice detailing work on his uh, belt and his vest. He also has a holster for one of his pistols here. So as far as articulation goes, uh, it's pretty standard stuff. The head rotates 360 degrees, up and down motion. Uh, arms, typical 360. The uh, elbow joints rotate and also bend. Then for the uh, actual wrist itself, there's 360 degree swivel, but it does not pivot. It's just a straight straight arm from that point on. Same thing with the other arm. Uh, legs, typical articulation, double jointed knees, and then the foot rockers. So, same articulation you should be used to with the regular G.I. Joe figures. Uh, and as we mentioned earlier, he comes with two weapons. This little assault machine gun thing here and a pistol. The pistol actually does fit into the holster. Just slides into place like so. Fits rather nicely. And then he can uh, grab the gun and go shoot people. So yeah. Overall it's a pretty nice sculpt. Not too crazy about the head on it but uh, you know it is what it is. It's got some really nice detail work if you get in there and look real close at it. Um, the mask is pretty neat looking. Uh, it's just a little bit flat as far as the color on it. It's just plain black with a silver accent on the visor. But it's it works pretty well, so overall it's not bad at all. Size comparison wise, the actual trouble bubble, the uh, sorry, Cobra flight pod is about the size of my hand, and three and three quarter inch figure or four inch figure, depending on how you look at it, right beside it. <clears throat> to fit him in here, you basically just bend his legs and push back on him until he clicks into place in that little seat belt harnessy thing around his waist. Uh, if it's easier for you, pop the canopy open so you can get in here and actually see what you're doing. You just snap in place like that. Close the canopy. Raise the control mechanism up. He can uh, grab hold of it if you want him to. And steer. And the gun itself does pivot, but that's about the extent of the uh, the action features. The uh, rudder things do move around, so you can you know, move them around. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. So these uh, these things have a tendency to pop out pretty easily, so no big deal there. But overall, it's a, a very nice update to the original. Trouble Bubble, or the uh, Cobra Flat Pod, as they're preferring us to say nowadays. Uh, the color deco is really nice. It uh, The red does definitely pop out and gives it that real urban feel to it. Uh, the Viper figure is pretty cool. Fits in pretty nicely with the rest of the G.I. Joe line. So yeah, overall this is a pretty cool little set.
So there we have the Cobra Flight Pod with the new urban camo kind of motif going on here. Overall, I really like the the actual vehicle itself. Um, it really does capture the essence of the original Cobra Flight Pod, the old Trouble Bubble. Uh, it updates it really nicely. Um, it does use the same mold as the original Cobra Flight Pod from the 25th anniversary line, so should not be a surprise that it works as well as it does. Um, there's really not a whole lot that has changed on it. Um, they've made a few modifications to it just to kind of bring it into the modern world. The clip harness being the major one. And overall it just really works really nicely. Um, comes with the Elite Viper, which again is a pretty good update for just a regular Cobra Viper to bring it more into the urban kind of camo motif with the red and the black and silver. So it works really well. So if you can still pick this thing up for a relatively small price then uh, I highly recommend it it's very cool it's uh, definitely one of the cooler vehicles that came out at that very small price point that these used to be at so uh, overall I highly recommend it it's pretty awesome uh, not much else to say about that so you know. uh, comment below subscribe to our channel if you haven't be looking for some of our new videos coming out in the near future. Give us some suggestions for things you would like to see in the future as well. And um, until next time, yo, J.